Have we got a week planned for you? So I want you to think about this little verse back in the ancient text. There's a book called Proverbs, and there was a king whose name was Solomon. Now, wherever you are on the spiritual spectrum, you can appreciate the value of good history. And one of the greatest kings of the ancient world was a king named Solomon. In fact, people came from all around the world to sit and listen to the wisdom of this king as he spoke of science and nature and government. And one of the things he said in this book of wisdom that he wrote goes like this. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. And just so you know, that word is a gender non-specific word, so it could read as easily as a woman thinks in her heart, so she is today. On the show, we're going to be talking about the way you think and how the way you think can directly affect your bottom line. Ed Talks Live is next. All right, hey, welcome to the show. My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. We are in event week, baby. I mean, come on. I'm on my way to Dallas tomorrow afternoon uh, with my beautiful daughter, Faith Rush, who's going to be helping as one of my event assistants for the very first time. And I can't wait to descend, is the word, to descend upon Dallas. Uh, by the way, we have 170 people registered for this event. Come on, 170 of the greatest people in the world. Uh, right now, it's about a little over 40 people who are attending the live version of the event. Uh, and everyone else, about 130 people, are attending online. It's going to be a party for three days in Dallas, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you are not registered, by the way, and if you just jumped on here, well, what the heck is he talking about? Well, the we website is below. It's called bigpivotevent.com. Um, now's the time to jump in and grab your seat because we are streaming live on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock Central Time. What that means is if you're on the East Coast, 10 o'clock is your time. If you're on the West Coast, you're going to get get up just a little bit early that day, okay? You're going to start at 7 o'clock in the morning and we are going to rock the house. I'm going to start the event on Thursday with an exercise that will blow your mind. Uh, you're going to get clear on what your purpose is in the world. And if you've got barriers to that, if you have things that are slowing you down or stopping you, we're going to get quickly through that so that you can accomplish the mission that you have uh, in the world. In fact, I'm going to take you through this mission exercise and you're going to it's going to appear before you what your goal, what your life's mission is. And then very quickly, what we're going to do right after that is I'm going to show you how to build your business around that mission first by targeting your market, by finding and identifying your ideal market. Man, you're going to, you're going to crush it this year, okay? And so much has changed in the last year and so many opportunities have opened themselves up to you that I don't want you to miss out on the opportunity to flat out change the world. By the way, speaking of changing the world, this is a community of world changers. So if you haven't already done so, jump in on the right hand side uh, on the chat on YouTube. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do. Uh, I, I usually get in about 20 minutes early into my app to get the show ready, to get some of the graphics ready and stuff like that. And I was there and there was already a, a robust conversation happening <laughs> in chat, okay? By the way, if you're on Facebook, the link's right below you or Twitter. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, that's totally cool. I will tell you that there's a lot more action happening on YouTube. So if you're on Facebook and you're like, where are all these people that Ed's talking about? Well, they're all hanging out on YouTube. So uh, so there was a big big conversation. What's up, Dennis? Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Mike Toy said, hey, I signed up with Kajabi for a year using your affiliate link. Hey, I can, I'll buy you that beer, man. Uh, Barry, good to see you, my friend. Uh, wishing you the best to your health and to your prosperity. Uh, so good. Wendell, what's going on, buddy? Um, he said, he said, he'll take the beer. <laughs> Hello, beautiful Diana Lovejoy, my favorite last name ever. Uh, so, um, uh, I, I was just thinking about you this weekend, Diana. I was thinking, what a, what a great last name. It's like Rush Lovejoy. I mean, come on. So, hey, Robert, good to see you as well. Um, <laughs> Ed, happy birthday, 6 20, 2020. And there's a lot of, a lot of twenties inside there. So, um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dr. Ed Barry. Happy birthday to you. Roy, excited to see you too, dude. Aubrey, what's going on? 
as usual, there's the website. Michael Fortin, what's going on, man? Look at this. By the way, if you don't know Michael Fortin, good friend, one of the best copywriters in the world, marketing genius. Diana says, look at that. So your maiden name is Pleasanton. So your actual name is Diana Pleasanton Lovejoy, right? Did you take your middle name? What a wonderful, it just speaks volumes about your character. <laughs> By the way, so Diana, when I was in grade school, I've been this way my whole life. So the fighter pilot thing was very natural for me. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, my I was always in a rush, or grade school and high school. I was always in a rush. Like I, I was trying to accomplish everything so fast and conquer the world. And my teachers would always tell me, don't be in such a rush, rush. And um, I went on to fly fighter fighter jets. And so I think, you know, I had the, I had the right approach. Uh, what's up, Ron? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> hey. What's up, Jacob? My man, Jacob Halsberg, world changer. It's good to have you on the show, dude. You follow your dad's lead and you pay attention because listen, Jacob, it's your generation that we're gonna be looking to very soon to start leading our nation, okay? Pay attention to what your dad's telling you. Rick, good to see you as well and welcome to the show. All right, so let me give you a little bit of what we're gonna do this week, okay? And then I'm gonna get into the topic for today. By the way, if you just joined us, my name's Ed Rush. This is Mindset Hacks. So you can charge and get more. We talked about this a little bit, uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on some of the content that we started with because the fact is, the way you think can directly affect how much money you make. In fact, most of the entrepreneurs I know are, are doing, uh, are, are doing um, uh, two things simultaneously and I'll explain what that is in just a second. The analogy is driver's ed. So tomorrow, on tomorrow's show, I'm bringing in um, two of my a long time client, Charles and Elaine Sanger. Uh, if you don't know Charles and Elaine, not only are they wonderful people, uh, but they're experts at showing you how to get a book uh, written and published. They've been around the publishing industry for a long time. Not only that, they are great people. You can see them actually on their sailboat. They took their sailboat literally around the world and on a mission uh, to Haiti where they helped uh, for years and years and years, some of the poorest people in the world uh, with their uh, passion and their energy and their service. So not only are Charles and Elaine experts at showing you how to write a book, but they're really great people too. So that's tomorrow's show. And then on Wednesday, Wednesday I'm gonna be in Dallas. And actually Wednesday, my team is gonna be setting up the event space. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna take my phone uh, and my iPad. We're gonna actually stream the show uh, directly from the event space. I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes and showing you some live event secrets. And I don't think Wednesday's show is gonna be, normally the show's about a, a full hour. I think Wednesday's show is gonna be a little bit shorter because my team and I have some things to do, but I'm gonna take you through the entire event space. You're gonna see it the day before as we're setting it up and I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. I'm gonna show you the green room and I'm gonna give you some speaker tips along the way. And then on Thursday and Friday on Ed Talks Live, what I'm gonna do for about 30 minutes, that's all, just about 30 minutes. The event actually goes from nine to five central time, okay? So at uh, 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock Eastern, I'm gonna open up the cameras to, the, to our YouTube live show. So if you're not registered for the event, you're gonna get about a 30 minute look into the event. It's not gonna be enough to give you the, all the content, okay? But it's gonna give you a little look into the event. So if for some reason you can't make the event, it's not in your budget or anything like that, you're gonna get about a 30 minute uh, preview on Thursday and Friday right here on the Ed Talks live show. So. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. Now, last thing I'll tell you by way of announcement, I'll tell you this a couple more times this week. Next week, uh, so after Big Pivot, most of you registered for this, by the way, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Big Pivot event. After the dust settles on Big Pivot, you're not gonna see me for about a week, okay? So uh, I'm actually taking Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday completely off. I won't even be on email. I'm back into action on Thursday and Friday. So Ed Talks Live will take a week off and then we'll kick it back up uh, the week of, uh, well, what week is that that we come back? Um, let me pull up the calendar and I'll tell you the exact day. Uh, we're gonna come back the week, not the, the week of the 29th will be off, so the week of the 6th, uh, we'll be right back into it. So, so uh, Monday, July 6th will be the next show after this week, and that week, I have got something up my sleeve that it's gonna, the guy, who wrote my speaking introduction is actually coming in that week and we're gonna do an entire Zoom training uh, to go even deeper on some of the speaking stuff that you learn at Ultimate Speaker. So got a lot of content prepared for you and a lot of fun jumping back into chat real quick. 
Uh, Arthur says, my son is now using your info to launch his online business to raise money for kids needing food and clothes and medicine. And Jacob's 12 years old. He's 12. Look, so if you're watching this and you are older than 12, you have no excuse not to take action, okay? <laughs> I, we had a, um, uh, one of my book trainings, we had a nine-year-old write and publish a number one best-selling book. And it was one of my favorite moments because now I could look at everybody else and go, hey, now what's your excuse? <laughs> what's up, Gina? Welcome to the show. That's exactly right. As a man, the King James Version says, as a man thinketh in his heart. Okay, so... For those of you who just joined us, this is Mindset Hacks, so you can charge and get more. And we're going to roll a little bit today, but before I do that, I want to tell you a story. So when I was in high school, I went to school outside of uh, the city of Philadelphia. Uh, <clears throat> we had a teacher in our school who taught history. And then later on in the day, I think it was maybe, um, you know, he's trying to generate some funds from another avocation. Later on in the day, the teacher taught driver's ed. Okay, so I don't know if you remember driver's ed. I don't remember, you know, if you remember taking driver's ed. I don't know if you remember teaching driver's ed. I was actually blessed. My my dad uh, taught driver's ed uh, back way back in like the 60s and stuff. And so he actually was my driver's ed teacher. But I don't know if you remember driver's ed. But w w basically, you get in this car. That's this old beat up, old Chevette, Chevelle, K car, whatever it is. And then on the top of the car, there's this huge sign that says driver's ed. And then on the back of the car, there's this huge sign that says driver's ed. And then on the front of the car, there's a huge side that says driver's ed. And then on the sides of the car, there's a huge signs that say driver's ed. In other words, you get in this car as a 16 year old kid and everyone knows within about a mile square around you that this is a dangerous person and you should watch out for this person, okay? And you know, the people driving behind you know that you're gonna be driving 25 miles an hour in a 45 zone. They, they give you some, some freedom to be able to drive at that. But the other thing about a driver's ed car, which you might remember, is on the left side of the car, there is a steering wheel, there's a, a shifter, and there's a brake pedal and an accelerator. Just like a normal car. But on the right side of the car, there's also a steering wheel and a brake pedal and an accelerator. Now. The reason for that is because the student sits on the left-hand side and the teacher sits on the right-hand side. And that teacher on the right-hand side is designed to sit there to make sure that the student doesn't kill himself or herself in the process of learning to drive. So I was here at my high school in Haverford, Pennsylvania, and you know, we were just hanging out after school that day. I think I was getting ready for football practice or something like that. And all of a sudden, I saw one of my friends come flying around the corner for his driver's education training. And he came right around the, it was right, it was on the school campus. He came right around the corner. It looked like he was driving a little faster than he was supposed to. And then all of a sudden, what you see is a car do this. And it's like one guy had his foot on the accelerator and the other guy had his foot on the brake. And I'm assuming the dude on the accelerator was my, my friend, the 60 year old student. And the guy on the brake was the, was the instructor. And he was trying to accelerate and he was trying to brake. And he was trying to accelerate and he was trying to brake. And it was the funniest thing I think I've ever seen watching this car, not even leaving the parking lot yet, going Okay, and it went did it about six times. It did it about six times before all of a sudden the car just stopped completely like right in the middle of the parking lot. <sighs> you know, the car sounds all angry and you could see the conversation that was happening inside there. I don't know exactly what was happening, but I can tell you that car had no idea what, was, what it was supposed to do. Go fast, go slow, stop, go faster, turn left. It was a very confused car. That story is an almost perfect analogy for most of the entrepreneurs I know. You see, most entrepreneurs put the accelerator on while simultaneously slamming on the brakes. And you've experienced that in your business, haven't you? Where you, where you, you maybe took a course, you got motivated, and then you started going, and then all of a sudden there was this like little voice in the back of your head that started slowing you down. Or maybe you created a product, then you started to make some money, you started generating a list and some revenue, and then all of a sudden there was this something in your life that just slowed you down. Or maybe you got a book out there and for the first time in your life you started getting your message out there and then somehow you got your attention shifted into something else and now you're going this way and you put the brake pedal on 
and this thing sits there and all of a sudden it slows down. And I can tell you that most of the entrepreneurs that I work with are like that driver's education car. They've got one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake and both of those things start by the way you think. So what would it be like to be able to put your foot on the accelerator and not slow down? What would it be like to be able to trans transfer or transition that car into a jet airplane and take off and never come back to the ground? Well, today I'm going to be talking about mindset hacks so you can charge and get more. And I will tell you that the mindset hacks that I show you today came out of the hard fought battles of my own struggle to charge what I'm worth. Now, these days I'm charging anywhere between about $18,000 and about $70,000. Full disclosure, I've been paid uh, literally millions of dollars by a certain of my consulting clients. I've had six-figure deals for people who, whose product launches I've done or whose businesses I've helped, and most of my clients have been anywhere from the ten to about $25,000 range. I've had over 450, I think the last count is 452, one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting clients. So I've got a lot of business under my belt. Uh, at this point, well over $10 million worth of coaching, consulting, sales, and still to this very day, at times, I see that little driver's ed instructor over at the right-hand side of my out of the periphery of my eyes, I start to put the brakes on, okay? So I'm gonna tell you that even some of the most experienced people in the world still have this going on, but I wanna share with you some of the tools that you can use to begin to create the mindset that attracts money, okay? And we're gonna do this today. It might flow over into another uh, day, but, but I think this week is actually a really important week to begin to share this because later on in the week, I'm gonna be, we're gonna be doing Big Pivot together. And when you're at Big Pivot, you're going to build a, business plan to flat out get it done. But it's not going to work if when you put the business plan in place, you're pulling yourself back. I'm going to show you why uh, this happens to great people in just a second. Before I do that, um, <laughs> see, dude, dude, I was so bad. I don't know if you remember your driver's test. I did my driver's test. You know, you get it in the car with a police officer. And I don't know how what awful thing you have to do as a police officer to get stuck doing driver's ed, but you you know he doesn't want to be there, and he knows he doesn't want to be there. The guy that I had was he was <laughs> he was not happy. And I did my parallel parking, and he he looked out of the right, and he goes, "You're a little far away, aren't you?" And I kid you not, I must, I moved like two inches, and then he looked out and he goes, "Just go." <laughs> Ah, uh, good stuff right here, by the way. If you don't maintain your airspeed, you just fall out of the, out of the sky. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump over to the other um, uh, screen. While I do this, I'm going to uh, play a quick bumper because why not? All right, so let's talk about how to mindset hacks to get paid what you're worth. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna roll for about maybe 20 minutes or so, and then I'm gonna just take your comments and your questions. Now, let's start with the foundation of why this stuff happens. Okay, so you have, uh, you've seen this before, right? You've seen this pendulum. You ever go to one of those museums that has the huge pendulum that's just swinging back and forth, okay? Now, I'm gonna speak about this in, in, in national terms, but if you're out of the country, I, I saw Navi was on the show, he's from Australia, Denise is from Canada, you could probably, you could probably just assume that I'm talking about your country here too, okay? Now, historically, Americans have been overreactors. <laughs> Some of you heard me explain why this is the case, and I'm gonna make a business point, but I wanna share this analogy as we start. Here's what I mean about this. So Americans, we've lived a very isolated existence. If you look at our geography, I mean, we're sitting out in the middle of nothing. You've got sea to shining sea, United States, right? We go from the Eastern seaboard to the Western seaboard. On the North, we've got a country that not only isn't our enemy, but has been a perpetual friend since the early 1800s. On the South, we've got a country that's not really our enemy either. It's a perpetual friend. And even if the country in the North and the South hated us. They really weren't 
neither one of them are strong enough to pose any kind of threat. And it's been like that for about the last 170 years. Okay. So you look at the United States from a geographical standpoint, we're very secure in terms of our location. Most of the countries in the world are surrounded by their enemies, but the United States, we're not. The second thing is we have basically everything we need in the United States to handle ourselves. We've got abundant crop structure. We've got a a national rail network and interstate network. We've got rivers that run north and south that take whatever we need north and south. And so, and essentially everything we need in terms of our own supplies are here. And so because of that, remember when I said that in times of certainty, people become complacent. Well, because of that, America for the most part has become complacent in its position in the world nationally. And because of that, Every time something happens in our country, we overreact, okay? So let me give you an example. On 9-11, two airplanes hit the trade, World Trade Center, which was a big deal. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's not a big deal, but in that moment, it was the biggest thing that had ever happened in anyone's life at any given time in the United States, and we freaked out. I know a lot of people are like against the war, but nobody was right then, okay? Everybody was like, what the hell just happened here, okay? that's about the response that America did to 9-11. Same thing we saw in the last two months to coronavirus. I mean, the moment we have any kind of uh, pressure externally, Americans just freak out, all right? And that's just by nature of the fact that we live in a great place where normally everything's fine and we have come to expect that this is our birthright. Now, as a business owner, however, you do the same thing. And what I'm telling you is most people want to avoid the extremes, okay? So if this is the extreme over on this side right here, what ends up happening is is good people, because they want to avoid the extremes, they swing the pendulum too far, okay? So let me explain what I mean when it comes to offering and getting uh, what you deserve as a, as, a, um, uh, as a business owner or a salesperson, okay? You've seen this and so have I. You've seen, let's say this line right here. Let's say this line right down the middle is the moral, ethical limit to how much you can sell or promote or persuade, okay? This limit for me, by the way, is under promise, over deliver, okay? And remember I said there's two rules. Number, rule number one is under promise, over deliver. Number two is to do everything you say. This is keeping your promises. Actually, I usually teach it in the opposite direction. But this is the line right here. When you start to cross the line, if you're, if you're not fulfilling on your promises or you're over-promising or under-delivering, you've crossed the line. Now, up until this line, you, do, you should do everything in your power to get the person to work with you. Because if your product works, if your service works, if your coaching works, then if you're not marketing yourself as aggressively as possible, you're actually doing your market a disservice because then they're gonna go work with someone else who's probably sitting out here. Okay, but what happens is most people in business see these people out here, right? You've seen them before, right? You've been to events before where a dude up on stage was, was just, I mean, you watch this program and you're like, I can't believe it. It's gotta be too good to be true. And then you signed up for it and you realize they didn't give you anything that you asked for. You know, you signed up for like the mastermind. You ever done this before where you're like, you think you're going to be working with somebody and then you show up at a mastermind group and there's like 90 people there. <laughs> I've seen that before, you know, and you're like, wait a second. I thought I was in this small little group called a mastermind, but now there's like 90 people here and that's not cool. Okay. By the way, that's one of the reasons why I keep my mastermind to 18 people so that we line up right here. Okay. So, uh, or you've done it before where you signed up uh, to work one-on-one -on -one with somebody and then all of a sudden they disappear and you don't hear from them and you're like, wait a second. Well, that's somebody out here right? Who's under promise or over, over promising and under delivering. Now what happens here when somebody sees someone here and you've all seen it late night infomercials and all that sort of thing, here's what happens. Great entrepreneurs, you know what they do? They run way the heck over here and anchor themselves right over here because you know what? Pendulums always swing backwards. Okay. Now remember I talked to you about the car, the accelerator and the brake, the accelerator and the brake, accelerator and the brake. Well, this is the car right here you start to market yourself and you put yourself out there aggressively and then you hear this little voice in your head where you say, oh my gosh, I don't wanna be like that guy. And then you start to pull yourself back. You start to dial it down. This is the reason, by the way, why I can write, like when my client, when you come in as my one-on-one -on -one client, 
A lot of times what I'll do is write your bio for you. When I do that, people are like, wow, this is really good. I could have never written that. Well, that's because you keep pulling yourself back, okay? And sometimes you need, your, need you to push yourself forward. So rule number one, when I'm working with people, here's rule number one. <clears throat> I tell people, I want you to so aggressively market your product, your service, or your business, or your brand, I want you to so aggressively market that you feel uncomfortable. I want you to so aggressively market yourself that you feel like you've actually crossed the line. And the reason I do this is because when somebody who's a good person feels like they crossed the line, they actually didn't even get anywhere close, okay? <laughs> they, they literally ended up here even though they thought that they were over here, okay? So I always tell people that I work with, I say, look, I want you to just push it. I want you to feel like, ah, oh, man, I'm like, because at that moment, you still haven't even gotten close. Now, you might be wondering, Ed, how do you know that? Well, I already told you in the introduction that I've worked with over 400 coaching and consulting clients. Now, I want to give you a statistic. Of the 452 people that I've worked with, in every imaginable business and industry, speakers, authors, consultants, coaches, advisors, people with brick and mortar coffee houses, okay? People who run some of the biggest franchises in the world. I'm talking about some multi-level marketing, I'm everything, everything, okay? People involved in oil and gas, okay? I'm talking about like all around, all right? Now, of the four, I don't actually think I had oil and gas, but I did have oil, all right? So of the people, of these people right here, from every imaginable industry, of the 452 people, can you guess how many, when they came to me, were over-marketing? Of the 452, how many people were thinking too highly of their business or themselves? How many of them do you think were accelerating too far their marketing? How many of them do you think were crossing the line and, re and I had to be like, gosh, you're, you're, you really probably are promising. You know how many there were out of this entire person, 452? Right here, there was 0%. Now, do you understand how statistically significant that is? If it was 10 people, 0% wouldn't be statistically significant. If it was 20 people, it'd be closing it down on that. If it's 30, it's when it starts to get statistically significant. If it's 452, I can look you in the eye with 100% certainty, 100% certainty, and tell you that you are under-marketing your value. Because it happens with every single person that's ever been attracted into working with me, that you're under promoting your value. So rule number one is I always tell people, push it. I want you to push it a little bit. I want you to push yourself a little outside of your comfort zone because when you push yourself outside of your comfort zone, you're actually still gonna land on the left side of the line. Okay, but at the very least, when that happens, hopefully, there goes the blue pen, hopefully what happens is some of the people that were going to this guy over here are now gonna start to see and be attracted to you. Okay, so that is step number one. I'm gonna get to Step two, three, and four in just a second, but before I do that, let me jump into chat and say hello. Um, hello, Sally. welcome to the show. Yeah, airspeed and altitude are, it's potential energy right there. What's up, Frank? Oh, man. Uh, Frank's uh, in the law enforcement. So, dude, it's good to see you, buddy. I'm glad you're back. Um, yeah, Americans overreact. You know who we learned it from, Gina. <laughs> so, hey, what's up, Navi? Good to see you as well. Um, yes, that's exactly right. Zero is none, and no, none of my clients that did that. All right, that, that blue pen is long gone. Okay, so let's move on to the second point. So first of all, step number one is push yourself past your comfort zone. And I know you feel like, oh man, I don't even know, what is that? Like, where is that? Well, guess what? That's why you get help, okay? look for some of you, step number one, and it doesn't have to be me, it can be if you're the right kind of person. I'm gonna talk this week on Friday about this coaching program. We're gonna close the coaching program out this week, okay? Um, so for some of you, that might be the right thing for you. edrush.com slash coaching uh, is the website. Take a look there, put an application in, and then we can talk, okay? But what I can tell you is one way or another, get some help. And the help that you get should not be from your mom or your dad or your friends or your family because they're awful, okay? Now, I'm, I'm not saying they're awful people. I'm saying they're awful at this because they're going to be like, oh, you're so great. You should just do... No, you need advice from people you trust, 
people in this community who could be like, why aren't you charging more? You're so much better than this, you know? We believe in you. Like that's the kind of person that you need to be working with. Someone who's bit, listen, here's what it is. Someone who's been there, done that, still doing it. That's who you get advice from, okay? So get your butt into a mastermind, get some coaching, get a coach, somebody who can push you along a little bit, but when you're getting the kind of coaching you want, get the coaching from the kind of person that you wanna be like and work with, okay? Don't, go, don't hire some cheap coach who's broke because if you hire a cheap coach who's broke, you're gonna end up being cheap and broke, okay? Because like responds to like. All right, so now, stop overreacting, start charging what you're worth. Step number two is to begin to rewire the way that you think, okay? Now, the reason I use this term rewire, or you could call it like recoding, right? Or you could call it like a software update. Used to be old brain science, people, people didn't understand how malleable the brain is. In fact, people used to believe that, man, once the neurons are set where they are, they're just set where they are. Well, all of a sudden, when we started learning, we've learned more in the last 10 years about the brain than we did in the previous 6,000 years combined, okay? And all of a sudden, people are understanding more about how the brain actually works and how the connect connections in the brain work and how the connectivity inside of the brain works and how the updates inside of your brain work. So for example, I have a system that I use, it's called um, ScreenFlow. I use it for video editing. And uh, so when I create a video like the one that we're, you're watching right now, I'll dump it sometimes into ScreenFlow, do some edits, throw it back up on uh, YouTube. So I have ScreenFlow a version 9.02. That's the version of ScreenFlow. And I just got an email, actually it wasn't an email, when I opened up the software on Friday, I opened it up and they said, hey, ScreenFlow 9.03 is available. So I clicked the button, it downloaded the new software, I clicked another button and it overwrote the software and then when I reopened the new system, it had 9.03. And what was fixed according to ScreenFlow is they fixed like 10 or 12 bugs, little things that were happening inside of the system that needed to get fixed. Well, guess what? Your brain works almost exactly the same way. And by the way, you shouldn't be surprised about that. The, our computer systems were created by human people. And human people create things like themselves. It's not, it shouldn't be surprising, okay? Um, you were created in God's image, and because you were created in God's image, you have a creator nature to you. And as a person, creating is natural for you, and as a software coder, creating something is natural for them, okay? And so it shouldn't be surprising that our computers are actually patterned pretty closely after how our brains are made, and I'm not even sure they did that on purpose. I think it just came naturally out of our creative nature, okay? So, if you have a piece of software that has bugs inside of it, what do you do? You load up a new piece of software, and then you start running that piece of software. Well, guess what? Your brain is basically the exact same thing, okay? So, if for some reason, when you start to offer your services at a certain rate, and you feel like, oh man, I'm charging too much, or maybe, I'm not worth it. When you start to do that, it's a, it's a software that's running inside of your system that's telling you to operate a certain way, okay? And so your job as an entrepreneur is to be updating, constantly updating your software. So for example, right now, I've got some stuff I'm working on physically with my body. Some of it is my body and some of it, frankly, is the way that I'm thinking and I'm working on updating my software on the way that I think about my health, okay? All it is is the way that you think. now. I have a technique for doing this, and some of you have seen this before. I did a show, uh, shoot, it was probably about a month ago called Hearing from God. I have a technique on how to update and recode mental software. I don't have time to go through all the technique right now. What I will tell you is if you are registered for Big Pivot Event, which you should be if you're not, by the way, here's the website right here. Uh, I know that I keep showing this, but there's a reason I keep showing it. It's because it's awesome. <laughs> okay, the website is below, bigpivotevent.com. Go check that out, register. Um, and I don't know, Delisa, if that coupon code is still available, but if it is, put it down there. If it's not, then it's expired and that's the way it is. All right, so go to the event. On, on Saturday morning, I'm gonna be doing an optional session. So, sat, so Big Pivot, Saturday, we start at nine. But Saturday morning, I'm gonna do an optional session. It's gonna be at 8.15 Central. So if you're on the West Coast, it's 6.15. If you're on the East Coast, it's 9.15. Um, and I'm gonna do a, section, a session called Hearing From God. I'm gonna take you through my technique. Again, downloadable so that you can use 
so that you can get the form and you can use it. Uh, and what I'm going to teach you is how to ask God questions about yourself and get some answers. And usually when I do that, I start to see some of the software updates that I need to do. Now, the way that I update my software, let's say, um, for example, let's say it's an Im image, body, body image. Let's say it's not even business. Uh, so what I realized, I wrote about this in 21 Day Miracle. Oh, by the way, if you, I'm about to walk right off the camera, which you should never do, but <laughs> if you want um, a good primer on uh, getting, fixing your mindset, get into 21 Day Miracle. I'm going to tell you the page. It's a 21 Day Mind Mastery Miracle. It's actually on page 63, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to teach you is a quick abbreviated version of that. Recoding or rewiring your software goes like this. I reject the lie that, and I choose to believe instead that. That's how you recode. You actually out loud reject something that you know is old coding and you choose to believe instead something that's new coding. So let me give you an example on, um, on body image. What I realized was for about, from about maybe age 13 until pretty much like now, okay, I'm still working on it. Uh, I've had an issue with like, I, I noticed this about two, two years ago. I walked by, there was a mirror over here. I walked by the mirror and as I caught myself out of the corner of my eye, here's what I did. I went like this. Ugh. That was the first thing that came out of my mouth when I saw myself. Ugh. And I realized that most of the time I looked in the mirror, I was saying to myself, Ugh. now, I don't know about you, but that's screwed up software. Okay. That means, that means there's something wrong in the software. Now, this, this hit me like a ton of bricks when I noticed this. So I have this old, it was someplace in my office here. Oh, they're up here. Um, I have a whole bunch of old photo albums. You ever, you ever go through an old photo album? So like, for example, this is a photo album. This is me. I can't believe I just opened to this. Oh man, this is me. This is a baseball game. That's me. That's me. I freaked out so bad in the middle of the game. I was like yelling at the umpires and stuff that my coach had to hold me down, hold me down to the, all right. So, so I don't even know why I opened up to that one. All right. So I, I was, I was flipping through, I was actually re reorganizing my office and I was flipping through an old photo album and I saw a picture of me when I was 16 years old and I was out uh, next to a boat. So I had my swimming shorts on, but I had no shirt and I was flipping through the book book and I thought, gosh, that guy is in great shape. And then I realized it was me. My first thought was, man, that kid's in great shape. I thought it was like one of my friends and then I realized it was me and I went back into when I was 17 years old and the way I thought about myself at 17, I thought I was out of shape. But then I saw the picture of myself at 17. I was like, dude, that kid is in great shape. And I realized my thought process and my reality at 17 didn't match up and that was the way it was my whole life, okay? So when I realized that, when I walked by the mirror and went, uh, when I saw that picture, what I did is I said, I reject the lie that I'm out of shape. I reject the lie that I'm growing old. I reject the lie that I'm slowing down. But instead, I choose to believe that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm in great shape and I live a vibrant life. Okay? Did you catch that? So what I'm doing is I'm taking the belief system, which is a lie, and I say I choose, I reject the lie that, <clears throat> the technique is, I reject the lie that I choose to believe instead that. I reject the lie that I'm fat and ugly and all the other stuff, but I choose instead to believe that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, which is true, okay? And I'm, um, uh, I'm healthy, have a zest, have a, a vibrant life, and, and nothing can stop me or something like that, okay? So that's what I'm going to choose to believe. And what I do is I say it. I'll wake up in the morning, say I reject, do this one. Say I reject, do this one. And by the way, some of you do affirmations. Affirmation is the second part of this coding, which you have to do the first. That's why sometimes your affirmations don't work. Okay, so what you need in a business, in a software update, is you need a belief system. You need the belief system that you are worth what you're charging, okay? And I'm gonna give you two different ways to do this and, uh, and two different ways to think about this. Okay, the first one I'm gonna give you by way of story, all right? So I did, there, I'm on um, now, I did, I've, done, I've done four iterations of a consulting program. The first consulting program, some of you were with me way back in the day. Uh, I did a program called Author Expert Marketing Machines Con a Certified Consultant Program, where I taught people how to go off and be book consultants. The second program that I created with Mike Koenigs actually was a program called Top Gun Consulting Toolkit. All right, you better get used to that name because there's another product coming out pretty close to that. All right, 
The third one that I did was called Consult and Profit. And the fourth one I did was called Strategic Advisor. That one's available right now on my website. And all things right now are pointing to a fifth consulting a product that's going to be like a mastery class of all the ones that we put together with all the new updates, okay? And by the way, I'm gonna let you vote this Thursday. I'm thinking about doing one of two events. One is an author event, one is a consultant event. I'm gonna let you vote uh, to see which event we do next. Uh, but right now, people are telling, by the way, if you wanna vote ahead of time, it's edrush.com slash survey. I'll, I'll pull that up real quick. I'm gonna show you, ah, you know what, shoot. Let me show you, let me show you this really quickly. Uh, because I'm gonna get to the story, but I might as well just show it to you since I like seeded this. S-U-R-V-E-Y. All right, hang on. I'm going to show you this <laughs> because why not? Uh, this is what I'm going to do on, um, this is what we're going to do on, I'm going to send, I'm going to give you, give all of event attendees this poll. So on a scale of one to five, five being the highest, rate your interest in the following event. These are the two events I'm thinking about doing next. The Ultimate Author, three days to show you how to create, write, and launch a best-selling book, guaranteed. And then the next one, is this is only two questions in this whole survey. Top Gun Consulting, how to close and deliver $5,000 to $50,000 coaching and consulting deals with what you already know. Okay, that literally is the entire survey. Uh, so if you're interested, it's edrush.com slash survey. Uh, and um, eh, let me know. All right, so um, now, so I did one of these events and it was a consulting event. I think it was the, one of the first ones. I think it was the author expert marketing one actually. First event, we had about 25 people there. One of the attendees was a woman named Verlinda. Some of you know her. She's been in our community for years. Thank you, Dennis, for voting. <laughs> All right, so, um, so at the event, in the introduction, in passing, I said, you know, the most successful people in the world, what they do is they just add a zero to their income. That's all I said. The most successful people in the world, they just add a zero to their income. And then later on, I got into pricing strategies. Now for pricing, I'm gonna give you this in a second. I'm gonna teach it in a second. For pricing, what I recommend is that you take the price you're comfortable at and add 25%. And that's my way of pushing you closer to this line, a little put out of your comfort zone. So let's say, the price that you're comfortable with is $2,000. Well, what I recommend is that you change your price to $2,500 because that's, you said, if you said the most I'm comfortable with is $2,000, then $2,500 is out of your comfort zone. And what happens is when you quote your fee at $2,500, when you, when you go to $2,500, you, you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. But what happens a lot of times at $2,500 is the person says yes. And when they say yes, you have a new comfort zone, so you can keep pushing the number a little bit, okay? So what I'm in the business of is creating new comfort zones. If, if for some reason they say no, you could always drop back, and now you're back at 2,000 where you were at anyway, so now you're just dropping your price back to where you were gonna be in the first place, okay? Gina said, well, no, you can vote whatever you want for each one. If it's five stars for each one, then five stars. Then we'll do both, okay? <laughs> So no, I want your honest answer on both of them. You don't have to pick one or the other. That's, by the way, why I didn't set the survey up so where you could pick one versus the other. I did it so that you could vote for each one of those, okay? Um, now, so I did this event, <clears throat> and this Verlinda was sitting in this event, and I said, uh, this is what you do with your price. You add 25%, and that's your new price. So the event ends. She goes away. Everyone goes away. And then two months later, we did another event. Um, the event we did she came back to. Because we said, hey, anybody who graduated from the first event, you can come back to the second event. So she's, now there's about 27 people and she's in the back row, way in the corner. I'm literally in my introduction. I'm, I'm talking like, you know you do events? You know you're like in the first part of your notes, okay? And I'm like, all right, look, gotta implement this stuff. I think I just told my carrier story. I'm like, you gotta implement this stuff. It's gonna be great. You're gonna, you're gonna you know, I'm giving them like the motivational part. And all of a sudden, I look in the back, and Verlin is like, she's like wildly raise, waving her hand. Not normal, like not a normal hand up. She's like, wow, like, like there's something wrong in the room, you know? There's fire or something, you know? Like she's, okay. So she's wildly raising her hand. And I'm in the middle of my intro. Now, normally, I wait to the end of my segments to take questions or feedback because it kind of breaks up the mojo a little bit, okay? So, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Barry, so 
so he was there. Okay. So, so, so she's like, now she goes, I go, what, you know what? She goes, I just need to say something. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Because look, I don't know if you've ever done events before, but like unsolicited, I got to say something that never, almost never works out right. Okay. So, so for Linda, she's like, I got to say, now I'm stuck. Now I have to let her say something. I, I have no idea. I haven't even talked to her since the last event. I don't know if she's going to be like, Ed, so full of crap or whatever. I don't know what's coming out. But she goes like this. She goes, listen, you all listen to me. You, whatever Ed says to do, do it. Just do it. And she goes, I'm going to tell you a story. She goes, my story is this. Ed said, you take the number you're comfortable with and add a zero. So I was comfortable with $1,500. I changed my price to $15,000. And the person I pitched it to immediately said yes. Now the whole audience starts clapping, okay? And I'm sitting there trying to figure out, how do I get myself out of this? Because I told her to add 25%. Remember early on day one, I'm like, successful people start adding zeros to their income. I wasn't talking about the price, but Verlinda took my, she took me out of context and you know what? She profited <laughs> because if she had added 25% to this right here, it would have been, I don't know, 1850 or something like that. Right? So here's the point. Here's the point. You know what happened? She walked out of my training with the wrong information, but mentally she was so sure that it was right that she walked into the deal with so much confidence that she actually ended up getting the deal, <laughs> okay? So you know what I learned at that point? I learned, and you can do anything you want when you put your mind around it. Like she just took her $1,500 and turned it into $15,000, but she was like, Ed told me it was gonna work, which I didn't, but she believed it and she still did it, okay? <laughs> so, so start recoding your brain to start thinking the way that you need to think so that you can get paid what you need to get paid. Because think about this, all those evil people out there with no conscience that are sitting way over there, they're out there doing it, taking all of your customers from you. But if all you did was get close to the line just a little bit, people will start coming to you, people will start being attracted to you, and you're gonna start getting paid what you're worth, okay? Now, two more things really quickly. The second, the third thing, this is the third of the things, right? The first thing was the uh, put, push it to the outside your comfort zone, Second thing was software coding. Third thing is this strategy right here, pricing strategy. Take what you're comfortable with, add 25%. Just do that right now, okay? And by the way, when you add 25% and you're comfortable with it, you, you, that, 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 if you just say, hey, I'm at 2,500, and the moment you're at 2,500, you feel comfortable, add another 25%. I want you outside of your comfort zone when you do this, okay? The third thing, and then I'm going to just, um, I'm gonna wrap up today with your questions, by the way, there's some, here's Barry said this. He said, I was there when she said add a zero. Oh man, it was so funny because she, um, she, uh, she, everyone clapped and I'm like, well, I didn't say, cause I'm about to teach this stuff. I'm like, I didn't really say that. She's like, you did. I go, I didn't really say that. She goes, you did, you did say that. I'm like, no, I didn't. I said the zero, but anyway. So <laughs> I'm going to catch up and chat in just a second. Chris, good question, by the way. I'm going to ask, um, uh, oh, okay, good. Okay, so um, thank you, Salit, for clarifying. All right, so the last thing, really quickly, I'm just going to do this quick, and then we're going to then we're going to I'm going to take your questions, and we're going to wrap it up. Um, you've heard the phrase "fake it till you make it," right? So, in fact, I think some really prominent people teach "fake it till you make it." Here's the problem with "fake it till you make it." You made it. Here's why I know this. If this is perception versus reality, on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, some of the biggest, most influential people in the world. Most of the people that come to me that I meet are like sevens, maybe eights. In other words, you're up there. Most of the people that come to me perceive themselves at about a one. Okay, we all have challenges with this, I do too. But here's the thing, this is the reason why I don't say fake it till you make it. Because that's, you made it, this is you up here already. This is the person who has hundreds of thousands of people that should be following them. Okay, but you don't have hundreds of thousands of people following you 
because you're perceiving yourself down here, okay? So I don't ever tell people to fake it until they make it. I ask, actually start asking people to create what's called accurate thinking. Okay, this is my last point. There's a book called Think and Grow Rich. It's by a guy named Napoleon Hill, one of the most famous wealth books ever written. If you haven't read Think and Grow Rich, read Think and Grow Rich. One of his chapters in the book is about accurate thinking. When I first saw the, sub, the, the, the ta chapter title, I remember thinking, man, I'm going to have to think a little less of myself now. Because when you get to a person who has a conscience and you say, you need to think about yourself accurately, most of the time people think that means bringing themselves down. Okay? What accurate thinking, though, if you read Think and Grow Rich, is actually seeing yourself as you actually are. For most entrepreneurs, at least the ones I work with, the 452 one-on-one -on -one clients that I've had, for most entrepreneurs, that means you actually need to start thinking of yourself way, way, way bigger than you're thinking about yourself, okay? Because right now, frankly, you're talking to yourself down and you're actually casting doubt into the prospect's mind because you're, you're, you're almost belittling yourself uh, in front of your audience, okay? So start thinking of yourself the way that you are and it feels, this is where the fake it till you make it thing happens, it feels like you're faking it because you feel like, I'm like a one, why am I pretending to be a seven, but you're actually really a seven. And if you could start believing that you're actually a seven or an eight or a nine on a scale of, of world changer and you're moving towards 10, you're gonna be a lot more successful. Okay, so I'm gonna jump onto the other screen real quick. I'm gonna take some of your questions in chat and then we're gonna wrap it up. I got a big day, by the way, finishing up all of the content for Big Pivot today. Salise said she read that book five times. Good for you. All right, so. Chris has a question, I'm gonna to get to this in just a second. Thank you for voting. You can put five stars on all of them. Make the book a bonus event. It's actually not a bad idea. Can't guarantee that I'm gonna do that, but. <laughs> the thing about the book event is it's expensive. So usually what I do when I do these events is I bring a team in to like create your covers and th there's, there's hard, hard expenses involved with that. But maybe we can do it virtual and figure out a way to make that happen. Um, let me think about that though, okay? So, Chris says, by the way, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush, this is Mindset Hacks so you can charge and get more. Uh, I covered four things today, by the way. The four things were, um, what was the first one? No, oh, uh, getting up close to the line instead of letting the pendulum swing. Number two was rewiring. Number three was um, add 25% to your prices, push yourself out of the comfort zone. Number four was accurate thinking. Man, we covered a lot in a short period of time. Don't forget tomorrow, I'm with Charles and Elaine Sanger. We're talking about, it's not about the book, how to build your business around a book if you want to. Day three, Wednesday this week is live event secrets behind the scenes and I don't even know how good my internet connection is going to be. I'm going to do it mostly for my phone, but I'm going to show you around the whole event area. It's going to be fun. All right. And then um, Thursday and Friday, you'll see little look live looks inside of Big Pivot. Register right now for Big Pivot. If you haven't already done that, it's going to be awesome. That's all I can say about that. All right. Last thing real quick. Uh, I want to get to Chris's question. Then we're going to wrap up today's show. I have a ton of good content, great mentors around me. Am I qualified to, con to consult with only two years official experience and a business degree? So Chris, the qualification question is one um, that I run into more times than I can count. Most people go, hey, I'm not really qualified to do consulting because I haven't had a consulting client. And I'm like, wait a second. Somebody, yo, oh, you gotta have a start. You know, Somebody's gotta pay you for something. So what I would suggest to you is you're actually thinking about the wrong person. And the people that ask this question, there's nothing wrong with asking this question, by the way. I get this, probably my number one question, Chris. Uh, the, the question about am I qualified or can I do this is oftentimes it's because you're looking at yourself and you're not looking at the person. What I would suggest to you is that some of the people that I've been hired to help were way better at what they did than I was. Brian Tracy hired me to help him with the aspect of his speaking. Brian Tracy is a way better speaker than me. Mike Koenig's helped me to, to do product launches. Up at the point at which he hired me, I, 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 he had already done eight-figure product launches, and he hired me to help him with that because 
He wanted an outside look and some expertise. So the first thing you're gonna do, Chris, is look at your market, answer the question, what do they want? What is the thing that they want more than anything? And then find a way to help them solve that problem. If you're the kind of person who's helping people solve problems, very few people are gonna ask you about your qualifications. And I'll tell you, even in the very beginning, I didn't have anybody ever ask me, like, how many times have you done this? Are you qualified to do this? Of all my students who have asked this question, they didn't have anybody ask them, can you do this? Are you qualified to do this? Look at consulting like solving someone's problem and less like proving your qualification. Because when you do, when you discuss your deal in terms of the result in their business or their life, people completely forget about you. So I have a series of nine questions that I teach my consultants to ask, I actually put them on a piece of paper and give them to them. And when they ask these nine questions, actually it's 10, when they ask the 10 questions, it's all about the person's business. I had one of my consultants go to a meeting and all he did in an hour and 15 minutes was ask these 10 questions and the business owner answered it. The guy didn't say anything else. His name was Carl. He didn't pitch anything. He didn't talk about himself. He didn't say anything. At the end of the 10 questions and the guy, the business owner talking for an hour, I kid you not, he looked at my client and goes like this, hey Carl, listen, I work with a lot of consultants and I gotta tell you, you're the best one I've ever talked to. You're really good and you're really smart and you know what you're doing and I know we're gonna work together, okay? And all he did was ask 10 questions. So the point is, the people that you're talking to care far less about you than you think they, that they might, but they do care a lot about themselves, which is why you gotta do it when it comes to, to business. Um, yeah, it's a great question, Barry. So he's talking about Carolyn Sampson. Uh, our, our, one of our first success stories in this program was Carolyn Sampson, who sold a $54,000 package of services that spanned about a year worth of delivery. Uh, and I was teaching people how to do like $5,000 deals and she came in and sold a $54,000 deal and she was like our first success story. So he said, if Verlinda and Caroline exceeded their expectations by over delivering at a higher price, isn't that what you're doing with accurate thinking? Cross wires is higher profits, yes. In other words, they, were, they almost were making a mistake but they actually did it right because they thought about that. Um, yep, yep, good. Can you have a talk sometime about once you have your book done, how to promote it? We may be covering some of that tomorrow, by the way. Tomorrow's, it's not about the book, but yeah, we could do that. Thank you, Ron, for that suggestion. I appreciate it. Cool, and thank you, Chris. All right, so. We are gonna wrap up today's show, so big picture stuff. We talked about how Americans in general overreact and how business owners overreact worse, okay? So stop overreacting, start aggressively marketing yourself to the point at which you feel uncomfortable because even when you do that, you won't get anywhere close to that line, okay? The second thing, I talked about how to rewire and retrain your brain. Third thing, bumping your price up. Fourth thing is accurate thinking. All you need is what I just taught you right there to start going out and doing that. On Saturday morning at Big Pivot, uh, the session is about 10.30 to noon central time. I'm gonna be talking in great deal about consulting. I'm gonna actually break this down shotgun style so that you can walk away and start doing deals, okay? So, let me make sure I missed all the comments. Yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot. Yes, dude, we're on, we're on it. All right, so, um, so without any further ado, Make sure you join us tomorrow. It's not about the book with uh, Charles and Elaine Sanger. Today was a blast and it went fast. Today went fast. All right, jump in tomorrow. If you haven't already registered for Big Pivot, now's the time. We're closing that baby out. That website's gonna disappear uh, really soon. So, uh, so make sure you jump in and say hello. Thank you, Diana. Awesome comment there too. Don't forget, I love you and I like you. Go out right now and change the world. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>